Oh hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster and today we are going to talk about the greatest publication of all time. Like in earnest, it is actually the greatest publication of all time. This is um, the most, uh, the single most interesting magazine that I have ever encountered in my whole life. And uh, the best part is that it cannot be bought. It can only be uh, given or gifted. I was fortunate enough to receive a copy of this beast and I want to share with the world how incredible this publication is because I, I genuinely feel like this is going to be the thing that is going to end up saving magazines is doing projects like this. Do you want this? Do you want this incredible thing? The way that this project works is that it gets given to a certain group of individuals. This is issue number one of this publication and then each of the recipients of it are supposed to then gift it to someone that they know. And I will be gifting this to somebody that is on the Patreon. So as always, you should go join the Patreon. Also incredible bonus, whoever gets this is going to also get issue two of this magazine. So uh, go join it up. The link is somewhere in the, the video right here, right now. Are you ready to look through this with me? We're going to look through all of it. Are you prepared? Let's go. Okay, so we're starting this off. Beautiful little detail on the front here where this blank is fun but fragile. Please handle with care. If we open this up, we immediately encounter the uh, plastic encasement where everything is held. And if we open that up, set this aside. The first thing that we come into contact with is this mailer. Uh, this is uh, typically what's used by universities to send messages between departments. And this is also where every recipient of the magazine signs their name and puts their information so that there's kind of a history of the object. But if we go inside here, we pull everything out. There's so much stuff in here. It is actually insane like how many individual pieces are within this magazine. So we're gonna start off with this letter that they included. It says, uh, is fun, cannot be purchased, only shared, fashion and art experience through the act of giving. We offer you this first edition and you then invite someone else to receive the next one along with you. Serendipity, experimentation and community all rooted through a creative, subtle engagement that begins with one and expands ever onward. And yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Everybody who joins the Patreon, get a chance to get sent this thing and then the uh, the second edition from is fun when they put it out. They also include a guide to all of the individual pieces of art that are included here that we are going to uh, use as well as we move through this. The whole publication starts off with a piece by Stephen Kogel and it's original piece. Uh, really uh, important element of the magazine because it's not a print by Stephen Kogel, it's, it's the original. He's a filmmaker, a painter, and a comic book artist. Um, I didn't know about him before this publication, but I'm really glad I do now. I follow him on Instagram now. His, his stuff is really moving. On the back of that cardboard, we have credits for everybody who is involved in the publication, and that's, I mean, people who created the artwork, loaned clothes, uh, trusted them with fabrics, or lent an ear is what the credits say. Um, yeah, it's a lot of recognizable names on there and a lot of people who are uh, maybe not recognizable but are very worth looking into. The next thing that's included is a, a piece of art, literally. It's uh, the artist Shitra Ganesh cut one of her works into pieces in the name of sharing it. Um, it's an incredibly special little thing. Two of them that are um, fairly similar. Uh, one looks like this and the other one is, is fairly similar as well. But it's literally just it's like almost like a square puzzle piece of a larger piece of art. Next up, we have a sticker and an envelope with their address for some reason, as well as an actual vintage Playboy magazine. And uh, so we don't get demonetized. We're just gonna strategically place our hand right here. This is the actual magazine. Um, they've laser cut out all of these pages so that they could include a little secret place for their, oh, whoops, <laughs> a little place for their own book. And I can't show all of their book, actually, because there's a lot of nudity in that as well. Um, it's actually a really sweet project. I'm going to read the little description here. Uh, laser cut to remove its original contents, creating space for new interpretation of sensuality and the sexual ideal. A series of nudes by Venina Sorrenti. Sorrenti. Using fabrics from various designers draws a parallel between skin and designer fabric. Both are raw until crafted into beautiful ideas for the world outside. 
and actually talked to the magazine's editor, Julie, who said that uh, there's a lot of intimacy that goes into creating garments that we can miss a lot because we move so fast with Instagram and stuff. And this is meant to just sort of be a reminder about the, um, the intimacy that goes into creating something original in fashion. Okay, so next we have one of the more unusual parts of this entire thing. This is a uh, massive poster, a life-sized poster, featuring portraits of men by Fabian Montique. Uh, because of the size, one has to be gentle in opening it. This is the description from the magazine. Because of the size, one has to be gentle in opening it, just as one does the human who stands unfolded before them. And I had to uh, work a couple of different ways here to get this thing totally unfolded. This is maybe not life-size, but it's pretty dang close. It is uh, just short of being like the size of a regular uh, human guy. And yes, you do have to be extremely careful when you are opening it because it is so massive. It's, uh, it's actually rather difficult to unfold. And I imagine that this is how they are paying for the magazine is to get sponsorships from different brands and stuff. And this is obviously an ad for Off-White, but geez, this is maybe the most fun, interactive, uh, what is it, native content, I guess would be what it'd be described as. But either way, this is absolutely beautiful. I, I really love this as a concept and I, I love this as part of the magazine. I, I have not had more fun uh, being fed an ad in a long time. Okay, we're going to pack all of that back up into the container that it came in, and we're gonna keep moving. I think we're a little over halfway done here. Next up is this accordion piece. The magazine notes read, featuring a portrait series of youth from around the world by Romain Cellier. On the front is a QR code that leads to a video series where each speaks candidly about what is fun to them. I checked that out and all of the videos are uh, exclusively in French, as they should be. And y'all know I was happy about this part. This is uh, called the zine of smiles and the magazine notes read, because fashion is fun. Very true. These are just pictures of a bunch of different Margiela girls during the runway shows. I have spent so much time with images of these women and because Martin tended to use the same models over and over again, I've like kind of independently fallen in love with all of these women. These smiles mean a great deal to me personally. I, I absolutely love this little booklet. I love how this thing is divided into like different quadrants. So we're like breaking into the third, third quadrant, I guess. I'm not really sure. Anyway, this one is called A Love Letter to a Coat by Craig McDean. Taking the time to truly get to know a singular garment is fun. We don't always get to understand the intricacies of each other or what we put on our backs. It is for this reason Craig chose to shoot someone he knows well, Alice Kim. Also included is the gaze of artist Zipporah Freed in the form of a drawing. I love these pictures so much. That's the drawing there. Because this is often how we end up feeling about a specific garment that we own, is that it's this precious thing that is worthy of making an entire little art book about and I love that ending. This story came out of a conversation about trees. Next up, we have a little booklet called Free Play. And the magazine notes read, in many forms, prose by Riz Ahmed, pairs by Jonas Glor, and the fantastical street scenes of dolls living their everyday best lives, captured by Tommy Tun. And I really like this one a lot. It's, it mostly seems to be a series of photographs that start us off where it's the same shoot but they've taken two separate photos from that shoot and paired them together. And anybody who's done styling like me or anybody who's done any kind of photography knows the difficulty of trying to find a single shot to, uh, to take out of a series of shots. And oftentimes you're tempted to take two pictures or take a handful of pictures and submit them as if they are a single photo because they are, um, it's so much more capturing of the identity of the outfit or of the model or their personality or what have you. I definitely can relate to this project a lot for shoots that I've done in the past. And they also have this really incredible series here where it's uh, outfits worn by dolls, very fashionable dolls. This is an incredible project by Tommy Tun, who we're all very familiar with. It's interesting how the clothes of dolls take on a very different personality when they're at that scale. Um, they, they, they seem to express the little stitches and pleats and 
everything that it's expressed very differently when it's on the doll scale rather than the human scale. This is, of course, a uh, another I think kind of wink to Margiela's work because he's obviously done the the doll clothes things for a long time. I think we have another Margiela obsessive on the team over it is fun. The next booklet I like a whole lot. The magazine notes refer to this as an ode to love, as an interactive story about freedom told through Han Gabby O'Deal and John Switek and captured by James Broadrib. And this one just has a lot of uh, really cute pictures of this couple in it um, and uh, some nudity at one point, so we're gonna have to skip through that. Um, but these foldouts uh, make, make it feel very intimate. This uh, this whole magazine actually has had a really strong theme of intimacy um, and the nudity, other than the nudity in the Playboy, which felt very like <laughs> sterile as uh, nudity of that kind often feels. Um, yeah, it's like, it's all been very tasteful nudity. I, I don't wanna get demonetized so I can't like actually show it. But um, yeah, nothing, nothing really erotic in here. It's mostly just kind of, uh, just kind of like, stuff that's sort of just in praise of the human body. Um, but these these photos are really, really beautiful. This couple, there's a, a certain like magic to this that you can kind of tell when two people are actually together. And I don't know it for a fact, but I would I would place money that these these two people are actually a real couple. It's very cute. Okay, so now we are to the last one and it is uh, by far, this is my favorite part of the entire thing. Uh, the notes for the magazine read a family album explored three different ways. Photographer John Balsam discovers a life he never knew his grandfather lived. Mikhail Kelbin photographs her children in her native Israel. And Sarah Benjamin creates a family of her own in documenting her friends. This first one is a, a really cool set of photographs that have been found where it's just a photographer who is showing the, uh, the photographs of his family history, which is all pretty good. These, uh, these photos are really compelling. A lot of really pretty stuff in here. And it's always really good when you participate in an art form to figure out that there are people in your family who have participated in that art form, even if it wasn't on a professional level. Um, yeah, there's something very cool about a photographer finding the old photographs of his family. This part here is uh, far and away my favorite part of the entire magazine. These uh, photos of uh, Mikhail Chelbin, it's a photographer and she's photographing her own children. And uh, there's something that is always very intimate about a photographer photographing their children that I absolutely love. There's a few of these that um, might be some of the best styled and photographed fashion editorial work that I, I think I've ever seen. And the cool thing about this is that you get a, a pretty unique reaction. I, I specified it before, but there's such a special reaction that you get from kids when they're in their kind of natural environment. Oh, this is very cool. You get a little bit of that true grit here with uh, with her feet. She's like, these these are very clearly like blankets and stuff that she's very familiar with. Just like, really bombastic kind of fantasy sort of clothes. Um, the kind of stuff that I would think that little girls would look at and say like, oh, these are like princess clothes. Oh, this is cute. This girl is like standing on a stool, very clearly standing on a stool. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's something really cool about like little girls like having um, kind of princess moments. And some of this probably is way beyond the realm of what um, these girls would think of as princess clothes. This is like my favorite, my single favorite photo in the entire thing. I absolutely love this photo. The The choice of photographing her behind the glass is um, kind of a perfect choice here. Let's pull this up and let's actually get a really good look at this here. Yeah, photographing her behind the glass. I think this is, uh, this is the best one. When I was first looking through this, um, just like pulling it out from the mail. Very big surprise in the mail. Um, this photo and um, this photo in particular and then the one after it um, actually kind of made me tear up a little bit. These are so emotive, very, very expressive and very, very sweet. I absolutely love these. Really, really beautiful. 
Such a friendly snake. And that's another one where very honest looking photos, very sweet stuff. And the lighting on those green ones is great. One of the few ones where we get some motion in the photo. I absolutely love that. I reached out to the stylist after I looked through this and was like, hey, this was like some of the most moving editorial stuff that I've seen in a really long time. And that, um, actually, let me get that stylist's name real quick. Who were you? Who were you? This was um, Haya Vider did the styling for that, um, that last editorial. Oh, this is pretty funny. When I saw this photo <laughs> tattooed below his eye, it says, don't cry. And when I saw this the first time, I was like, <laughs> too late, it's too late. Um, but yeah, Haya Vider really sourced some incredible independent designers for that um, editorial with the girls. Um, she is well worth following on Instagram. Her at is just a at H A Y A V I D E R Haya Vider. And this last bit is uh is pretty cute too. This is the the family you choose, your circle of friends. And these all feel like very honest, intimate things as well. And this is the kind of thing that I think works really well in the format of print is these um, very personal photos of, because uh, you've kind of already committed, right? You're like, you're in the magazine and you're, you are looking through it. This is not something where you can just like close it out and look at another app. This is all, I think kind of the, the one of the big uh, things that makes magazines so wonderful is that it kind of slows your um, patience down, kind of makes it where you, really give time to look through something and kind of live in someone else's world for a little bit. But yeah, that last one is by far my favorite one. Everybody definitely needs to go uh, follow these guys. And um, now we are just going to put everything back. That's five underscores, by the way. It's five underscores on their at on Instagram. It's at five underscores and then is fun, I-S-F-U-N. So I'm going to put this back exactly the way that I found it. Thank you so much for joining me. Please go follow is fun on Instagram. It is at five underscores is fun. I S F U N on Instagram. The link to follow their stuff is down in the description. It's honestly an incredible publication. And even if it's something where you're not able to get an actual copy of the publication here in its first couple of issues, it is definitely something where the journey of this publication is well worth following. Set up alerts for them. They, I mean, their account is incredible. Go follow them. Again, if you want a chance to get the first copy of the greatest publication of all time, go join the Patreon. We're gonna wait a little while and then select a winner and that winner will get issue one, which they should then be awesome and send that out to somebody else. And then they will also get issue two when issue two comes out. I love you all dearly. Thank you so much for joining me.